Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Still the attendees, they are still joining the webinar room. So I'll request all the students to keep the patience. Once we reach to the remarkable attendees count, uh, we immediately start. Uh, our today's esteemed speakers, our today's keynote speaker, they have already joined the room. Till the time uh, we start the broadcasting, we start our presentation. Uh, there are some housekeeping instructions to the students. <clears throat> At the end of uh, the presentation, we will have some time for the question and answer. So those students who wish to ask the question, please press the hand raise button from the control panel in front of you. Since this event is being recorded, kindly name yourself and uh, your uh, year, whether you, you belong to second year, third year or final year, before you ask your question. In case if you are unable to ask the question, we will have another opportunity for you. So simply post your question in chat window and we'll bring up your questions during the presentation. I humbly request to all of you to keep your mobile phones on silent mode. This will prevent the disturbances to the attendees and as well as presenter too. If some student miss out any part of webinar, don't worry guys, the recording of this event will be made available on YouTube and the Institute website. Uh, I know that uh, you may face some problem. If you're facing any audio and video problem during the webinar, uh, then keep patience uh, because it is your local internet uh, connectivity issue. So you may face the problem because of your local connectivity issue. Wait for some time and uh, even after waiting some time, if you don't uh, hear the audio or if, you, if, if, you, if, in, if the video is not visible, in that case, you can rejoin this webinar again. So that's the best way to rejoin the webinar. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, with this uh, housekeeping instruction, uh, I would like to go for our welcome address. So with the permission of uh, the organizer, Dheeraj uh, sir, sir, can I start? Can we start the welcome address? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. Okay. Thank you. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends. I'm Nitin. On behalf of Maratha Vidya Prasarak Samajas KBT College of Engineering, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to every one of you join in this room. I welcome you all for the today's webinar on software testing and IT job market after COVID. We thank you all for taking time out of your schedule and joining us for this event. I would like to extend my warm welcome to Kushal sir and to Jake sir for being with us for today's webinar. They are the expert for our today's webinar. So I would like to extend my heartiest welcome to both of you, sir. Sir, welcome you again to MVP's KBT College of Engineering. Thank you, sir. So we'll try our best to adhere to timeline, which enable us to organize this event smoothly. So with this uh, welcome note, let us kickstart our event because I know audience, they are eagerly waiting to listen the Kushal sir and the Jake sir. So I request the man with the distinct vision and the today's per, uh, speakers, uh, Mr. Kushal sir and the Jake sir. Sir, please start with your presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, Kushal, sir, you just give me a moment. I, I will give you the presenter's access. Okay. Sir, I have sent sure. you and request presenter access. So please check. Okay. Yeah, sure. I got it and I'm sharing the screen. Please let me know when screen is visible to yes, you. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, so your screen is visible. Yeah, so visible. And yes. Okay, great. Okay, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, guys. Good morning, Jakes. Uh, I hope you all are doing good. You all are at home and uh, you all are safe. Uh, 
by keeping yourself at home so we uh, myself kushal bamre and uh, i am working in the cmit uh, johannesburg it is the it organization marketing organization and uh, we are working for the microsoft so and uh, prior to that i was working with uh, ptc software pune and uh, about my education i have completed my engineering before engineering i completed my diploma from the government polytechnic nasik and before that the school was the jawarnaud vidyalaya so this is uh, all about me and uh, in my current organization i am working as the technical qa and uh, Uh, today me and jex uh, we are going to deliver the seminar or we can say webinar on the topic software testing and it job markets after covid 19 so yes. basically uh, uh, i told about myself and i would like to jex to introduce yourself kushal sir kushal sir uh, i'm sorry to yeah, interrupt yeah. you uh, tell yeah. that i, I oh, forgot sure. to uh, excitement i just forgot to introduce both of you sir please give me a moment so that i can introduce uh, jex Okay, no problem. No problem. So, uh, friend, dear friends, uh, one of the esteemed uh, speaker for today's webinar is uh, Jex uh, Bilasar. Jex Bilasar, he is basically the founder and the chief executive officer of Bila ICT Solutions. Uh, earlier to that, uh, he was software quality engineer at the Dynamic Visual Technologies Johannesburg. He was also a former Java developer at the Accenture Centurion. so i welcome you again both of you we have got really a esteem and a high profile speaker for today's webinar uh, so thank you all thanks thanks a lot for uh, uh, giving me the opportunity to interrupt you uh, uh, kushal sir please over to you sir yeah sure thanks mm -hmm. okay uh, so the topic is software testing and the uh, job it job market after covid 19 so we will we will discuss uh, the software testing means we will discuss some technical things how the pro uh, what is actual software testing how the processes are going on in the actual organization and then we will move towards the it job market uh, after covid 19 means what will be impact that things so please let me know if i am not audible if the screen uh, screen is not visible please let me know so We can yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm watching it, sir. No problem. You are audible and you are visible. No problem. Okay, that's great. Go ahead, sir. okay so agenda is uh, introduction of software testing how processes of software development processes software testing process going on the uh, going in the organizations and uh, test as automation mm, now uh, nowadays the world is moving towards the autom automation so everyone wants mm, the automation uh, things in their organization so after discussing this testing uh, things we will move towards the impact of covid 19 on current market then as you are the engineering students we will discuss about the strategies after graduation means what options uh, are available will be available for you after completing your graduation and uh, obvious the last thing is the employability and the career means uh, this is the very important things means everyone uh, wants uh, to choose a good career better career everyone has his ambitions so we will discuss on that so this is the summary or we can say agenda for our session so let's start with testing so what is the testing means uh, earlier in the organization uh, software was developed and the developers uh, no was doing the testing themselves so uh, there were some issues in the live products live applications so the boards are established uh, i think around 2003 2004 uh, to maintaining some standards in the softwares like the board ist qb and uh, qa market software tester market uh, was start booming from that uh, period 2003 4 i guess okay so there is separate qa team to test the develop software but what is actual testing so testing is uh, we just uh, we have the requirements from client about the product and we our motive is to deliver the product as per their requirements so we test this we test that the product is or function is meeting that the requirement or not okay so in short words we validate the output of the product is meeting to the expected output 
that thing we uh, are checking in the testing so in the definition wise it is the process uh, to identify the correctness completeness security and quality of the product or the application uh, in simple words i can explain the testing uh, suppose you go to the buy a pain uh, pain so what you do once you receive that pain from the shopkeeper you just check you just open its cap you just write something on the paper so what you doing exactly so you are doing the testing okay so same scenario we apply for the software and that is the software testing but we check in detail we check as per the requirement right so you even you check while purchasing the pain you check whether it is working or not whether cap is fitting to it or not uh, its color and that stuffs okay so this is the about the software so in short you just remember in the testing we just validate the actual output with the expected output so that is about the testing we do the same thing we apply the input to the software we will have the actual output then we check with the expected output if there is any different then we can uh, call there is a bug or there is a defect in the application okay in the organization there is a process to develop any software okay so this is the we call it the software development life cycle and uh, in that we gather the requirements from client we have the requirements from client and once we receive that requirement from the client we analyze that requirement and starting working on the uh, design for that design in the sense we can call the architecture high level design like how we are going to uh, code that things which approach we are going to uh, apply that things okay so, but uh, many times uh, requirements are fridge fridge means uh, once we receive once you confirm and uh, it is fridge means not going to change okay then we start the process earlier it was happening but nowadays we are uh, using the agile methodology in that uh, we we are keep welcoming the new requirement at any phase of this development okay so uh, Uh, earlier requirements were fridge uh, and you know, we start working on that but nowadays uh, it is change and uh, we are welcoming client with the requirements in middle of the process as well so once we finalize with the design we start with the coding actual coding developer uh, does that coding and they will come with some modules some builds okay then once it is completed we start with the testing actual testing and we will be discuss discussing uh, more about this block today okay once testing is completed and we look uh, we look uh, the software is good then we deploy that software to the client or to the live okay and once after deployment we will uh, software industries provide the maintenance for that as well as we uh, listen to that uh, current version is 7 then 7.1 then 7.2 with some bug fixes okay so that is nothing but the maintenance uh, sometimes there is no new implementation no new feature no new change still we deliver a new version okay so that version is nothing but the fixing of bug with some bug fixes so this is the overall process of the software development and as uh, i said we will be discussing more about the this testing process so we will see what actual the testing life cycle okay the again requirement analysis uh, we completely work on the basis of the requirements what client wants what end user wants so we will be working on that we are working on that so we analyze that requirement and once we uh, complete the analysis of that requirements we start uh, to create a test planning what test plan exactly test plan means uh, we check uh, what we are going to test which scenario we are going to cover which testing tools we are going to use Uh, when we are starting the testing which resources are we going to use this everything is included in the test plan okay and uh, we we start working on that once requirements are fridge so we once we complete the test planning we move towards the test design 
what test design include it includes the actual test cases suppose we are writing a test cases for any application we are going to test any application we write a detailed test cases for it the test cases are completely based on the requirements what requirements we gather what we got from the client it is completely based on that and uh, for example we are writing any uh, calculator application we are developing any calculator application so we will write uh, test cases for that whether uh, addition function is working or not plus button is working or not uh, subtraction minus button is working or not that we uh, write a detailed test cases in that test design okay and uh, what the content of test case if you are writing any test case you should add this uh, number or unique test case id should be there so we can uh, call it when any failure is there we can call that uh, test case and execute this so the test uh, test case include the test um, test case id that should be unique then the objective of the test case, test case what we are going to check in that particular test case for the calculator we are writing one test case and that is the addition test case so we will uh, mention that uh, to verify the addition function or addition button okay so we will have the uh, test data for that two numbers we require right so we will add the test data that is the two numbers are required for the addition purpose then we add the steps that we call the test 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 case steps uh, and that are we like uh, uh, launch the calculator app launch the application enter first number click on the addition enter second number click on the equal button that are the steps for the, that particular test cases and then we write the expected result what will be the in the expected result it will be the application should display the correct addition number as an output okay so that will be mentioned in the test cases in the test case and we while execution we do we follow the same step and if we are adding enter first number we add a five enter click on the plus button enter the second number plus seven so we'll be expecting the output is a 12 5 plus 7 is 12 and we check whether that developed uh, cal uh, calculator application is giving the expected output not expect uh, so if it is giving expected output so we will pass that test case uh, in the status column we will update with it with the pass and if it is not giving the correct output then we will mark it as a fail okay test implementation is mainly the part of automation side uh, there are some repetitive test cases so we will uh, uh, rather than executing manually in each build in each version uh, we try to make it automated okay so we uh, write a script for that and for the next version for the next build we will execute that test case it is a part of automation actually and test execution as i mentioned we actually execute the steps uh, that is the test execution after test execution we will make a report how many test cases are passed how many are failed we will prepare with that report okay and once execution is completed we will uh, make that as a test closure so we will done with that calculator application testing but there is a lot of scope to add the test cases in the calculator application there is a number of whether uh, that one button is clickable or not two is clickable or not so we can add uh, multiple test cases for any application so your experience is uh, plays an important role here that uh, if you have limited time and you have to test that application so you have to uh, put your experience there and have to write the important test cases it is completely depend on the requirements and the time available okay the next part is testing techniques actually there are two techniques black box and white box black box uh, testing means we will not look into the code we will just uh, check on ui and uh, we execute that test case and this black box testing is usually uh, usually or always uh, done by the software testers and another part is white box testing in white box we uh, we don't check on the ui you directly check on the code whether code is correct or not is there any error or something and it is uh, uh, usually developers do that testing white box testing
so again we have the example for black box we just uh, compare two numbers which which one is the which is the maximum number so on the for the black box we just uh, see that two numbers on ui and we will mark um, whether that is a uh, the test case is passed or not here it is showing 50 numbers so it is the correct answer so it is the this test case is passed we are doing this with the uh, black box means we are not looking into the code okay we are not looking how we uh, how did we get this 50 number we are just checking yeah it's 50 nights and it's fine this one is another if the result is 12 then obviously it is the fail this one is the black box but the other case is white box developer looks into the code and they checks yeah whether it is showing right or not by checking the code so usually before uh, handing over the build uh, developers do the unit testing or this white box testing so they uh, they do not look into the deep but yeah uh, they check uh, some uh, they have some spot checks and uh, they before handing over the build they complete that unit work unit testing or we can say white box testing and once uh, we get uh, the build at the testing side in the qa environment we do the smoke testing smoke testing means you can define it as means uh, suppose there's any application like uh, google application okay and we receive the um, build for this google application and uh, what we include in the smoke testing we check whether this google application is testable or not means whatever provided from the development end is it testable or not testable in the sense if it is failing at the login uh, in the login scenario if we are putting the clear uh, correct credentials and clicking on login and uh, it's giving the some error or it's a uh, crashing so that means uh, the application is not testable we can't proceed the testing okay so this is the smoke testing we just confirm the build is testable or not okay uh, smoke and there is also the sanity testing which is almost same like in some organization they consider the smoke and sanity as the same but in but in some organizations uh, they consider sanity as the in-depth testing in the for the same application we can take an example of google uh, in the smoke testing we just check whether it is uh, user can log in or not but in the sanity we will uh, do the in-depth testing means we will check the modules as well whether compose module is working or not whether sent mail module is working or not inbox is working or not that is the sanity testing but in some cases it is considered as the same one okay and uh, and during the test execution cycle we as i earlier mentioned uh, that it is depend on the time available and the risk factors so we prioritize the test cases which test cases are we going to execute so we after prioritizing prioritizing the test cases we execute that test cases and we uh, for the uh, the output result is is same as the expected result we mark that test cases as pass and if it is not matching we mark as a fail so for the failed test cases we identify failed test cases and we log the defect for that okay uh, so this uh, is, there are 10 test cases are failed so we will be log the defects for that and that defects will be assigned to the development or developer or development team so this is the cycle and once uh, so we will completing cycle after logging defects but apart from uh, uh, moving forward we will get the defects uh, fixed by the development and that will coming again in our plate so while logging the de defect we have to um, there are different uh, test uh, defect tracking tools like the Jira, Bugzilla. We can use that, and there are different parameters, or we can say attributes of the defect. So, what are they? Uh, that is the defect ID, project name, on which project we got that, module name, which phase of the build we got that, types of the defect. I Means sometimes it is the UI defect that UI is not correct. Sometimes it is a functional defect. Sometimes it is a uh, performance defect like the application is working fine but it's taking too long time to load the page so we will categorize the type of defect 
then the important thing is severity and priority of the defect so severity and priority means uh, severity means how the defect is impacting on the application impact of the defect on the application and priority means how urgency to fix that defect mm, i can say it with the example severity we can say any application is crashing okay so we will mention it as the severe defect because uh, after launching the application it is crashing immediately or after logging in to the application after logged in it is crashing okay so it's a severe defect because user can't do anything okay and uh, for the low severity we can say any any spelling mistake is there for the low low severity and low priority we can say any there is a, any help document and in the help document there is any spelling mistake so we can say it is the low severe and low prior because this is not affecting or any function of the application okay uh, sometimes uh, we there is a high priority and low severity defect high priority means low severity means it is not uh, affecting on the application suppose the, your college ui the college name is suppose the uh, education society's name is the ndmep okay and your website it is showing mdmep this there is a spelling mistake just a spelling mistake it is not going to affect your any application or any function on that website but still this defect is high priority because it is your home page and there is the organization name is incorrect so we have to fix that immediate though it is low severe it is not affecting on the your website but still it is high priority because uh, it is your college uh, home page and uh, prestige of the college the question of prestige of college okay then uh, there are description we have to mention the detail uh, about the defect what's happening when we execute the test case what uh, you are getting in the output we have to mention that in detail status of the defect so, so status are uh, earlier any defect is in the open state while filing or logging the defect, it should be in the open state. Then if developer fix it, then it should be in the fixed state. If you verify this and it is the, uh, after verification, you feel that yeah, it is fixed correctly. So you can mark is the close. So defect status will be the close. And if you think, yeah, it is not uh, fixed correctly. So you will reopen that defect. So status are open, fix, reopen, and the closed this is the reported by or on means reported on which date reported by which keyway and assigned to assigned to means uh, here we have mentioned the module name sometimes uh, any application there is one small module this is developer developed by any xyz developer so if we mention that module name it will directly assign to that developer so, uh, because as we are using the tools like Jira, Bugzilla, they have um, these tools have uh, the features like that. If you select the modules and the defect are addressed to that particular developer, and if you can add CC as well manually, um, this developers manager, developers team lead, you can add in the CC. Again, this is the defect life cycle. How defect proceeds? If you got a new defect, you will file that it is assigned. For the clear scenario, for the positive scenario, it will assign to the developer. Developer will fix that. It will again come to your plate in the QA side. You will retest that. There will be two options. It is verified and looks good and close. And another option is it is verified but not looks good. So it will be reopened and again go to the new state. Again, this cycle will continue. Okay, but some defects, uh, if QA file the defect and uh, due to some misunderstanding or requirements are not clear, then team lead or manager will decide or BA will decide, business analyst will decide it is the invalid decide, defect. So it will again mark it as a result with the commenting that it is invalid defect. Sometimes another QA has already reported the same re defect. So it will mark as the duplicate and making and uh, at the end it will goes to the close so defect, uh, it is overall defect life cycle and uh, now we're moving to the there is a there is a lot of things to discuss on the test uh, manual testing as well as the testing process but uh, 
uh, i have picked just important things here and uh, now jex will explain you the test automation hi jex are you there yes i'm here thank you kushal for taking us through the testing process um i hope you have explored ex explained everything clear loud and clear um and if we have understand all the testing process when it comes to software testing in industry so now i'm going to take you through the the test automation um the processes and what is needed in test automation um if you have which knowledge is needed um um, how can you join the, the, test, the test automation industry? So since we have covered everything in uh, manual testing, so one thing I need to add is that uh, manual testing and test automation works together. Um, we are both doing testing, but in a different way, but testing the same application. We can be applying manual testing to a certain application and apply um, test automation in an application, but both of these type of testing can be applied in one application, testing the very same thing. But the, the, the only difference is that the other one we are doing, um, we are doing the testing manually, and the other one we are doing it um, auto is being automated by developing the script. So for uh, test automation, it's very much important to have a coding background from different languages test automation it can be um, the script can be developed using java can be used um, using c sharp can be used using python you can use javascript so you can use various languages when it comes to test automation um, developing developing script so now we are going to look at, at manual testing uh, maybe you can problematic so you can see we have um, repetitive text resource may lack coverage potential coincidence in coincidence so when we look at these four points we have um, when it comes to repet repetitive we are going to look at um, take our test cases and see what is it that is repeating when it comes to testing if there is something that is repeating it means we are going to test it manually we are not going to consider automation because it won't be manageable when it comes to automation if we want to test something that is keep on repeating. So the second thing is checks. You can see the point says um, checks resources. So when it comes to manual testing, manual testing, since we are going to test the application manually, meaning we are going to take more time testing the application so uh, the introduction of uh, of automation testing was to come in and limit time that we spend more into uh, into uh, manual testing so in automation testing help us to reduce time when it comes to to testing and when it comes to manual testing we need more resources to test but when it comes to automation testing we can have a few resources to develop the script and help us to automate the application. So when it comes to um, um, lack, lack of coverage, so when it comes to automation, you have to bear in mind that we are not going to, automation does not cover 100%. Automation can cover 80% of the application or 70% of the application or 50% of the application. It depends on how because before we start automating, we need to sit down and look at the test cases that can be automated, and we look at the test cases that cannot be automated. For example, if we want to log in with multiple users, we can automate that. But if in the system there is something that keeps on changing, we cannot automate but to do it manually so that we can be able to manage. So automation does not cover 100% of the application, but it's the percentage that we need to cover will be determined by our analysis when we check the test cases that are available that need to be tested in the application. So we identify the, the test cases that need to be automated and we identify the test cases that can be tested manually. Kushal, can we go to the next? Um... Yes. So this is a very big question. Why automation? So you can see the point that we have here. As I explained that 
automation help us to reduce time as manual testing some somehow can we can spend more time you when we are going to use auto, uh, manual testing but if we are using to, uh, test automation it help us to reduce time and the second thing our script can be reusable our script can be reliable and accurate when it's come to um uh, manipulating data when it's come to testing our system and we this can be repeatable when it comes to automation testing and one thing can be programmable in automation in programmable it means in automation we have something we call a pipeline where we can use jenkins so this is one of the environment that we can use to automate so jenkins when it comes to jenkins the advantage of jenkins when it comes to um, automation when it comes to pro programmable we use jenkins to schedule our our test so meaning we can schedule our test to run even if we are not in the office so that's an advantage for automation to to schedule tests to run while we are not in the office but what we need to do is that we need to um to set up in our pipeline to for for jenkins to send us a result to our emails that will give you will give us um an idea to check what which test cases they have passed and which test cases did not pass and jenkins will also give us um all information and give and tell us the full description on the errors to show that what why did our test case did not pass and all that they have passed they will indicate and give us a full result the full result of the coverage of all the test cases that we have called scheduled to run through test automation on the pipeline can we go to the next um kushal yeah yeah sure so when to automate so the only time we need to automate um is when after all manual testing has been done and completed so as you see here it may be tested um twice manually just to be sure that the system is stable because sometimes automation can be tricky when the system is not stable so for us to begin automation we need um, our system or our application to be stable so that we can be able to start with our automation our automated script can fail if our system is not stable because if the system is not stable our automation script cannot be able to interact with some of the object that we try to interact with from the system even the, the environment the environment need to be stable so if the environment is stable this can help us our to help our automation team to automate all the up the application successfully but being being stable of of the uh, of, of our application this play a big role when it comes to automation automation cannot start when our system is not stable we need everything to be stable manual team need to stay tested the application twice or once and be 100 percent sure that everything is working fine so that's when we're going to start automating next slide kesho so which are the two what are the tools that we can use when it comes to test automation so there is selenium selenium is an open source automated tool so this tool can be used to test web application. So this does enable users to, to sail through various browser specific testing papers. You can use Selenium for, um, for Chrome. You can use Selenium for Firefox. You can use Selenium for Internet Explorer. You can use Selenium with, um, with Edge. So you can use Selenium with various um, um, browsers. So Selenium makes this even more important um, is that most major browsers vendors are taking steps to Selenium and integrate part of their browsers. So Selenium also have something we call Selenium IDE and a Selenium recorder. So Selenium recorder helps you to record all your steps that have been mentioned on your test cases when you want to automate your application. So you can record, let's for example, you want to record a login. So using Selenium Recorder or Selenium IDE, you can go to your application, to your web application, and record each and every step, typing your password in, typing your username, 
and clicking the but and clicking the button. So using Selenium, since it's an since it's an open source, so each and every person can be can have access into Selenium and be able to set up it into your machine. But there are some steps that you need to follow when you need to set up Selenium. So we also has, have QTP. It's also known as UFT. So this one normally uses something we call a language we call VBScript. So those who are familiar with um, VB programming, which is called Visual Basic. So QTP works, works very well with, v, with, with VB or Visual Basic. So when it comes to RPM, RPM is specifically to help us um, test mobile application, but it's not used to test web application. So we have different tools that are there, but each tool have their capabilities. RPM is capable only to test mobile application. Selenium cannot test mobile application, but we can use Selenium to test the web application. But we can integrate RPM and Selenium so that we can be able to, 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 to test our, our mobile application. So with cam when it comes to, to Load Runner, so in testing, we have different type of testing. Kushal have also have, have already mentioned manual testing. So we also have uh, test automation. So we also have something we called um, performance testing. So what really happens in um, test, test performance testing? So in performance testing, that's where we are going to determine or to test the performance of the, of the application. For example, if we are testing a login um, application, now we need to test how our application is going to, to perform. For example, if in South Africa, we can have 50,000 logging in into the application at the same time, and in India, we have about 100,000 people logging into the application at the same time. What is it that is going to happen into our application? Are we going, our, is our application going to be able to handle the pressure of the login that are being punched in at the same time? If 100 people are logging at the same time, we need to check the performance and the stability of our app. Because if we don't, if we don't go for um, performance testing, this can hit us. This can be one of the things that can come back to us when our application is in the market, while our the users out there are using the application. So before the application is released, automation is done, manual testing is done. We need to go for performance testing to be hundred percent sure that our system is performing well. So even if we have a load that is coming in, our application can be able to handle it. So load runner is being used in automation to, to say with data mine, we put the load of testing to data mine that if our application receives loads of, of users, how is it that is going to, to handle the, the, the process? So when it comes to SOPI, SOPI is a SOPI have two things, two, two platforms or two type of testing that we can do. We have um, REST AP REST testing, and we also have SOAP testing. So SOAPI is specific is basically used for API testing. So API testing can be done manually. API testing can be automated. So when we are testing API using SOAP SOAPI, it can be tested manually by testing the API one by one, or the APIs can be tested like auto. They can be automated. So when we are automating the APIs, it means we are interacting with, the, with a lot of APIs at the same time. But when we are doing it manually, we can interact with one API at the, one API at once. So we're running this API to check if the user do this, what the result that are we going to, to receive? So the same result that we receive, we're going to confirm the response that we get from the system. This is not that this is not done on the UI, but it's done on an API base to check the response that we're going to get from the system when we are testing our APIs. And what is it that our API is it's is, is, is returning to us? So we have different type of method where we have get, 
So get will use it when we want to get an information from a database using an API to check. Are we getting the right response from the system if we get this type of information? For example, let's say we have a profile of a certain user and we want to get their details from the database and then we want to use their ID number or the identity number to get their information. When we use their ID number to get the information, are we getting the right information? Are we getting the right information for the specific ID number that we have posted in our get statement? So we also have post. So post, we also use it, use it to post an information in the, in the database. So on the UI, so when you have your, your system in place or you have your application in place where you have to add your details or maybe you have the button add, in the, in the back end, is it is an API that say post that takes your information from the UI into a database. So if the user is interacting with the UI, there will be a lot of things happening in the back end, which is also an API. An API creates a communication between the UI information and the database. So it's transporting data from the UI to a database. Kushal, can we go to the next? Yeah, sure. So, okay. um, uh, sorry, Jake, for jumping in. Uh, okay, so here we are done with the software testing. So, Dheeraj, would you like to take a question and answers for software testing right now or at, or at the end? Uh, I'll just check the questions if there are any questions in the question box. Yes, sir. There are a few questions. Sir, uh, the question is, what type of SRS issues can be detected during the review of requirements? Yeah. Uh, so the uh, question is, question? What, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to please. Uh, what type of SRS, software requirement specification yeah. issues, yeah. can be detected during the reviews mm -hmm. of requirements? Yeah, once we receive the requirement from client, uh, generally BA business uh, and uh, BA receives that uh, requirement and uh, there is scrum meeting, so it is discussed in the meeting. So sometimes there are requirements are not clear, right? Uh, expected, what is expected, it is not clear sometimes. So this kind of, uh, mainly these issues we always face. Uh, client send requirements, there may be uh, with the, some assumptions, but while developing the any software, we can't work on the assumptions or considerations. So uh, not getting requirement, uh, requirement with the specific output, that is the main challenge or issues we, pay, we face in the development life cycle when we receive the uh, software requirement specifications. So we always expect the specifications should be in detail. That's great, sir. Uh, sir, there is one more question uh, from Aditya. Uh, he's asking that uh, Selenium has a lot of drivers, for instance, Chrome driver, Firefox driver, but Selenium, Selenium also have Android driver. Is it used for Android testing? um yes so when it comes to when it comes to testing an android application we will need android drivers specifically for android for us to be able to interact with android application same as when it comes to ios application so remember android and ios these are different platforms or different operating system so when we set up our environment for selenium to test um, Android. We will need Android, um, something we call JAWS, uh, JAWS files for us to be able to interact with Android. Same applies when we want to test iOS applications. We cannot use the same JAWS files to install into our environment or our environment, I can say in a simple way, are not set up or configured in the same way for Android and iOS. So iOS have their specific JAWS files that can help us to interact with iOS applications. So Android also have their, um, their JAR files that can help us to interact with iOS application. So yes, it's used for Android. 
Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, there is one more question from Rishikesh Dawal. Rishikesh, I have. Uh, uh, you can unmute your speaker and you can ask the question. You have raised the hand. I think he's a student from third year IT. Rishikesh, mm -hmm. uh, if you hear us, please go ahead. Ask your question. Rishikesh, you have to unmute your speakers. Unmute your audio and then you can ask the question. Okay. Uh, uh, I think uh, there is no question. Students are still typing the question. I can see. Uh, Kushal, sir, with your permission, we can go ahead for the next part of our presentation if, it, if, it, if something is flipped. Okay, cool. Uh, before moving forward, uh, just uh, regarding a manual and automation testing, uh, though the manual testing is mandatory every year, means we can't proceed without doing the manual testing. But nowadays, organization want, uh, want the automation. So uh, the condition in the market before two years, three years, or four years, we can say uh, we can work only as a manual tester. Okay, but nowadays, the situation is changing and it is moving toward the automation so we need to learn automation and automation tools if you want to uh, want to select your career as a qa engineer okay let's move to what the impact of covid 19 jax please Ajax, am I audible? Oh, yes, you are. You are yes, you are, Kusha. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so do you want to proceed or should I? Yeah, you can proceed. Okay, cool. Uh, so nowadays we are struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it is very unexpected and we uh, never... Um, prepare for that means we even not expected any time this kind of condition so what uh, this virus did uh, or this pandemic did means everyone uh, globally everyone is in confusion it's uh, push everyone in the panic mode or confusion mode so nowadays people are just taking care uh, themselves and but no one knows what is going to happen so and it is a huge impact uh, not only in the India not only in the ASA but it's a worldwide so there is much impact there will be much impact of this pandemic so let's uh, discuss about the economy or markets what's going to happen so uh, people are worrying about what's going to happen after this pandemic uh, will I get a job or not what will be happen so uh, there are some terms like the slowdown recession and depression we generally say oh the recession is there now recession will be coming recession is going on so um, why suppose one of our friend uh, one of our friends is getting job it doesn't mean the market is good or one of our friend is available in job market hunting the job and he is not getting the job or one of our friend is uh, fired from any company so it doesn't mean it, it is recession right uh, means getting one or two job or losing one or two job it uh, it does we can't say it is recession or it's a good in market so there are terms, some terms like the slowdown slowdown is uh, considered as when gdp growth rate is less than compared to the previous years and that time it is not in negative it means yeah gdp rate is uh, going down but still I'm saying about the GDP growth rate. It is going down, but not in negative. So we can say it is it's a slowdown. It's not a recession actually, right? So in current situation, uh, as I read, uh, the GDP is still in positive for India as comparing with the last year. It is going down as per the last uh, GDP growth rate. It is. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it was 4.2 or 4.7 something. So it's still in positive. Obviously, it's going down. So we can say it's a currently at this moment, it's a slowdown. We received last GDP last quarter means at the end of the February. Still end of the February, we can say 
it slow down but uh, after that it happens uh, lockdown and this covid 19 uh, is in aggressive mode after that in the march we can say march april or currently as well in the may so till this condition which gdp uh, growth rate we have we can say current in the current moment it is a slowdown and what actually recession is recession means uh, the gdp growth rate is less than zero it's the in negative and it is con uh, continuously for two quarters it is going negative means for last quarter february uh, it's a negative uh, now we will have at the end of this month end of may we will have gdp growth rate so again it it's a negative so this condition happens that that time we can say it, it's the recession okay uh, means gdp growth rate is negative and continuously for two quarters or more and the worst situation is the depression depression means gdp growth rate is less than 10 percent or more means or mm, bad condition and it is continuously for three years or more so depression it is a very very rare scenario in the history it have only once uh, after uh, 20, uh, 1929 uh, or 1930 I guess uh, there was the depression it happens only one and it is very 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 rare scenario okay so mainly uh, in the month of uh, March April May uh, everywhere it's uh, it was the lockdown it is going on as well so maybe in upcoming uh, according to the upcoming GDP growth rate, which we will have, which we will have at the end of the May, so that time we will May in the recession. Okay, right now we are in the slowdown. So these are the terms globally used to define the economy or job market. We can say. Okay. So what actually going to happen or impact on the markets or the business so due to this coronavirus we can uh, categorize some industries like the which industries are affected means in the uh, negative way which industries are going to affect in the negative way which are winning industries uh, winning industries as well I mean some industries are growing or getting more in this situation as well these are the winning industries and what are the solutions for that and why we are facing these financial problems we will discuss that <coughs> i'm sorry so affected industries affected it means the negative um, impact of this covid 19 is on the retail industries travel industries travel is completely collapsed travel we can say hospitality restaurant people are staying at home not moving outside so these businesses are completely these verticals are completely collapsed travel hospitality restaurants sports even there is uh, live matches we can say the um, olympics is postponed ipl is postponed so a lot of people are depend on that events as well so real estate event management manufacturing big manufacturing companies uh, are not working in these days so production not only sale but the production is also stopped during these days as we can say uh, we can see the prices for the oil and gases it's um, a massive reduction in that so these are the negative verticals we can say affected due to this covid 19 pandemic so while talking about the winning industry we can say digital products are doing good in these days as well freelancing uh, earlier people were doing freelancing now they were working from home nowadays they are doing the same thing so it is uh, not affected due to this and the stock market we can say yeah the share prices are uh, reduced too much okay the share uh, stock market stocks prices are reduces but still people are investing there some people want to purchase the shares in the low price so money is running in that vertical so it is also the 
we can say winning industry though price share price is low but money is running there people are purchasing the shares online training online coachings these are going good nowadays insurance people were not aware about this uh, insurance means uh, we can say a little bit careless about their health insurance but due to this covid 19 or coronavirus it may increase insurance people will take the insurance and feel safe themselves so insurance industry is growing up data analysis is going up and home gardening these are affected because uh, like the home gardening uh, people are not going outside to purchase um, vegetables and that things and if they have a uh, space in their garden they can um, choose a home gardening right so this vertical is growing up so these are the impacted or affected industries and these are the winning industries so you will see you will see that there are multiple verticals but it is not there anywhere complete it we can see the reason is it is completely dependent business on these verticals we can say 90 to 95 percent it is depend on these verticals so if these verticals are going good then it business will be going good so these winning industries will help to it industries to improve and these affected industries uh, will will take a it industries in the back step okay and we can observe the winning industries where they are already people were doing the online trainings already people uh, was purchasing the insurance but this is increased so this was exi uh, exist there but just increased but then affected industries some verticals like travels hospitality restaurant these are completely collapsed so the the it industry it depend on this all factors and unfortunately affected industries we can see more than the winning industries right now and it will completely depend on how much time will it take to recover from this pandemic if it is going to recover early then it would be fortunate and it would be good for us that these businesses will recover early and it indirectly it will uh, growing again okay the recession in the 2008 and the current situation it's little bit different because that time market requirements were less and that times people were not using the services financial crisis people were not using services and it industries was impacted but nowadays in this pandemic people are forcefully at a home countries applied lockdown themselves okay so there is a money in the market but people are not outside businesses are not running that's why due to this uh, pandemic so it is on hold if it is recover early then again all industries will growing and indirectly it will growing so in the last uh, recession we can say it was financial crisis and this one is existence crisis this pandemic is because here government and everything is thinking about the human life they are saving the life so it is a question of our existence human existence so it is called the existential crisis but unfortunately this existential crisis will convert if it is not recovered early then it will convert into the financial crisis already it is on the doorstep so the question is when um, when it will recover if it is recovered early then it industry would be would be um, indirectly uh, in good move but it takes long time and uh, coronavirus affecting a lot then it may be the reason of worrying okay so it's about the affected industries and winning industries so what is the solution on that what we can do on that so government is working at their level 
administration is working at their level uh, i heard about the us and that countries even in india also the government is uh, releasing some financial packages to to keep money running in the market so government is doing in at that they, their level administrator is working on that level but what we are the it professional we are the it students what we can do what, how we can recover so as it professional or uh, it students we have to learn new things uh, we have to upskill ourselves we, we, we don't have to waste our time in this period okay means uh, using up social media when you are um, watching anything in the social media someone is earning at that time and you are wasting your time so use it effectively okay uh, keep yourself upgrade or up skills so once market is back to normal you will be the one person that uh, organization would like to approach you or to hire you because you have learned something you have keep you keep yourself updated so the solution is keep yourself updated make a weekly goals make a monthly goals we just decide oh i will do this thing i will uh, do this online course but we don't have a proper plan so just make a proper plan set a daily target not daily then at least set a week weekly targets monthly targets and so we we can do this thing in these days So, Jax, do you want to put your review on this? We can go to the next slide. Okay, cool. So, the big question to the to the most of the students here, I believe. Um, since we are since during this pandemic and it's been affecting everywhere, and I believe that everywhere in the world is being affected in most of the industries, not only IT, and most of the companies that have to employ these students um, are being affected. And some of the companies, when we check in the news every day, they are they are retrenching people. So the big question is to most of students, I believe today is what after the graduation so when you look at in the market um after the after the this pandemic i believe that most of the companies we will will will, will take time to recover and some of them will will recover fast it will depend on which industry that they are operating on but looking specifically on it it if you check at the moment we are on lockdown everywhere in the world people are indoor they are not going outside but only if they are going to do essential services so it even at the moment is playing a very big role but how is it playing a big a very big role people are busy now um when they want to order food they use application where they have to order food online if they have to request some services they have to do it online so it by doing that is still playing a very big role to assist us during this pandemic, when you need to collect data across the world on how this pandemic is affecting us, IT plays a very big role. So I believe that even after the graduate, after after the graduation, we will still have a chance as IT students to come in and and be employed and get chances to work in this IT IT industry. But the very most important thing that we need to do, like Kushal said, we need to upskill ourselves. The technology industry is growing very fast every day. It, it, new things are being introduced each and every month. We are discovering new things each and every year. So what do we need to do as IT student or technology student? We need to keep, we need to keep our eye on what is it that is new in the market? What is it that these people, these companies are looking for? If there's a certain skill, these companies, you can see that they are looking for, you need to go out there and 
upskill yourself. You need to go out there and take. There's a lot of online courses that are there online. You can go to Test Automation University if you wanna you wanna join testing. There is Udemy. There is a lot of um, free courses online if you are not preferring to buy. So the best thing that you can do, even after graduation or even even before graduation, you need to upskill yourself. You need to do research. You need to be competent after the graduation. But I can assure you that most of the companies, have, even after this pandemic, even during this pandemic, these technology companies will want will always look for people who are competent. And if we are not we are not competent in this industry, it's going to be difficult for us to get into it and start working. So we need to sharpen, we need to sharpen ourselves, we need to upskill we need to do research we need also to check the job market what is it that this company technology companies they are looking for if we find out there is something that they are looking for and we don't have it in our skill set we need to go that, go out there and take online courses during this lockdown and start upskilling ourselves like kushal said you need to have a plan that this week this is what i'm going to do this is what i need to achieve you need to have a goal Every day you need to upskill. Even myself today, I'm working, but I'm still upskilling every day. I'm still taking online courses. So it's very much important to keep track of what's happening in the technology industry. By the time you, you graduate after, after the graduation, you will be ready for what is will be happening in the technology industry. So even after the graduation, during this pandemic or during this pandemic, this pandemic may have impact in our lives or in the technology industry or in the job market. But if you are competent out there and you have everything that is company technology companies they are looking for, you stand the chance to be employed. So if you so if you can if you can check it, we have also have entrepreneurship. Um, like myself, I decided to go into entrepreneurship, start my own company. So I believe there are some of the um, technology students that can go out there and look at into the market. They do a research and check what gap is there in technology and what solution can you bring. I believe these big companies, they are out there looking for our solutions to come in and give them solutions. So if you can step into, we can also step into entrepreneurship after this graduation and come up with companies and bring solution into technology industry. This will also help us to employ other graduates to come in after this pandemic or after the graduation. By doing that, we're also, we also creating employment. Over to you, Kisha. Yeah, then everyone has the question that what he or she can do after the graduation. So so there are multiple options as you are you are seeing in the screen you can move for the higher studies higher studies in the india outside the india then you will have the public service like uh, bail and we can prepare for that uh, then you can move for the management okay entrepreneurship as uh, jacks explained very well uh, campus campus placement is uh, also the good option if you hired uh, when you are learning in the third year or final year it will be the good option and uh, the one of the most important option is become an expert so uh, if you learn um, four years the it engineering and uh, you you grab some knowledge but it uh, as jacks mentioned that uh, after four will uh, at the starting of uh, your engineering you uh, mm, something is running in the market something is booming in the market but at the time of completion of your engineering that has been removed and new thing has arrived so nowadays like iot artificial intelligence uh, data science machine learning these are the booming react development these are the booming areas in the it industries so you can become an expert in that so now you have time you are at you are at uh, home so you can uh, take uh, online courses and you will be uh, ready with this expert you will be expert in that if you utilize this time well then when uh, market is good and uh, everything is running smoothly that time you can use these skills and you will be easily hired you and i listened to uh, mr 
Anand Deshpande yesterday, the MD and the owner of the persistent system, he said uh, it is the short term and long term impact. Obviously, short term impact will be there because money is not running, but uh, he's looking positive on the long term impact because there will be a job after if we recover early from this pandemic then uh, it will take a six months or eight months to become a normal everything and after that market will be boom okay so though there will uh, some industries will shut down but you have a, as a chance as an entrepreneur to start your own industry okay uh, even you can see after the demonetization uh, um, economy was not good but at that time, some online uh, payment portals like uh, Paytm and that uh, that that were doing the good market. So they picked this as an opportunity. Okay, so even uh, you are passing out this year or next year, so there will be a lot of students uh, or the competitors or the job hunters in the market. So you, if you are expert in anything, you will be getting easily job. But if you are a normal as the other people or other folks then it will be difficult for you to hunt the job because if you apply for any position there will be the uh, 100 or 150 other applicants as well and everyone knows the same thing then why the employer will hire you so you must have any skill we must be the expert in the anything okay so these are the options which you can select after the graduation or uh, okay and there are some tips for you means what we can do uh jax can you please explain most of who have already covered i think but please continue I believe some of, most of the tips here we've uh, we've already covered um upskilling is very is one of the very most important thing that we have to do I can assure you, even people who are employed today in technology industry, they skill up, they still upskilling just because in the in this industry, everything is on changing. We still have something new that is coming in, which require us to to upskill each and every year so that we can keep pace with the technology industry. Online courses, let us go out there and 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 take online courses. We 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 obtain. Your certificate, like Kushal said, you can become an expert in different areas. Let's take all this. Um, online courses will help us to gain a unique skill. Like I said, sometimes you need to be you need to be competent so that you can be able to be unique. If they have hundred applications in a certain company and you are there with this unique skill and you are competent, obviously you will be the one that you they will be going for soft skills up to the research you have to i believe that all the students need to do research they need to be updated about everything that is happening in the technology industry they need to keep track of each and everything the companies that they are interested interested to they need to keep track and do research by doing research you also research what is it that is new in the market what are these companies looking for from this technology student if they are looking for something specific and you don't have it you go back and go and take online courses you do research by doing that you'll be upskilling yourself and you'll be up to date about what's happening when it comes to ed education and job abroad you also need to look for option um abroad what can you do where can you go to out uh, to, to to further your study where can you go to further your career then you can look at too many options you can look at canada you can look at usa you can look at south africa you can look at anywhere so by doing this even these countries some of the things we are doing it differently so going to another location to to upskill or to to further your education or to further your career this also can help you to become an expert in a um, specific field okay to continue on the education and jobs in abroad uh, the thing is that uh, if you earn the job in abroad uh, there are some visa processes work permits required right so people uh, and for the work permit or visa processes like the country the us canada australia even south africa you need a work experience and you are right now you are studying you don't have experience you are a student okay so mainly you will get a job in you will get a work permit 
if you have experience, there are some visas like uh, in Canada, there is a PR. In South, South Africa, there is a critical skill visa. In Ireland, there is also one visa. In Germany, there is a job seeker visa. Okay, there are multiple visas that countries uh, offer, but you need an experience for that in your particular domain. So right now you don't have that. And only case is that without work permit, without PR, without any visa, if any company is offering you from the Germany, from the US, Canada, South Africa, from anywhere, without having an experience, without having a visa, work permits, PR, if they are offering you, in that case, you will get a job in but it is you can get a job in abroad but it is very very rare scenario without having a work permit or pr the company will offer you uh, i'm not saying company will never offer you yeah there are some cases but chance is very less so to making a pr or permits uh, for the abroad you will need at least two years of experience okay uh, and so some people uh, are choosing the education option they are going for the education uh, in the abroad in the germany i can say canada us so there is one option if you are financially good uh, the cost is obviously high uh, in indian rupees i can say it's vary from 15 lakhs to 20 lakhs the process is you have to apply to the university or the college with your graduation then they will offer you the higher education Okay, then once they offer you a higher education, then you can apply for the visas for any country like Canada, Australia. But it's a little bit costly. It varies from 15 lakhs to 20 lakhs. But a better option is you prepare you uh, for the job in India right now. You will get a job in next few months and then you earn some experience and then you can apply for the PR or the work permit. But if you are financially good, you can directly choose the education option. Obviously, uh, for, for example, Canada, there is a two year, uh, higher education is of two years of one years, and they will provide you uh, three more year extension for the three more years. You will get the visa for education that is of the two years. And uh, uh, moving forward, they will be extending that to the next three years. I mean, total we will be there for the five years. And after living in Canada, after three years, you will get a PR, permanent residence of Canada. So that one is the also option. So you, you can choose anyone you, uh, you are interested in, in obviously your ambitions, your willings, that are the things and also the thing you will have the family, you have the family to feed. So practical things you have to also consider your ambitions and concluding that you have to choose the career. Okay, that's all from our side. So, uh, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I request all the students, uh, if you have any questions, please post it in the chat box or you can raise the hand. Are there any questions, sir? There is one question uh, from Rishikesh. Uh, so he's asking that what are the other tools for the testing application? Can you hear repeat me, sir? The, repeat the question. Uh, what are the other tools for testing application apart from the tools that you have mentioned during the presentation? Um, your line is breaking, eh? Okay, okay, Jack. Yeah, I will yeah, continue okay, okay. this. Okay, cool. Uh, so the, there can, are multiple yeah, tools. Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, okay, they, Jack, they I'm are, proceeding they, with the question. Okay, the they, question was, what are the other tools apart from the apart from this list for the automation test automation? Okay, okay, good question. There are a lot of um, automation testing tools. So apart from the one that we listed here on the under our presentation, there is a tool we call Catalon Studio. It's also an automation tool. They also have something we call Ranorex. It's also an automation tool. There is micro, micro focus unified functionality. Is it a testing tool? There is test complete is a testing tool. Um, 
these, 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 these are the te or test automation tools that can be used when it comes to automation. But there are up, up to 50 test automation tools that can be used. Um, we also have X-ray. Uh, we also have test pad. We also have um, practice test. We also have test monitor. We also have test rail, as I've mentioned before. We also have IBM Rational Quality Manager. Uh, we also have Head Spin. We also have Parasoft Ceramic. We also have Squish. This is one of the automation tool for automating web application. We also have RunnerX. RunnerX is, is one also of the most popular. Squish. Yeah, this is one one of the mo most popular for for automation. Uh, we also have Selenium as of Asian for the moment. What did machine talk about Selenium QTP? What did machine QTP? Um, um, there's also a tool called Testim. It's also an automation tool that can be used to automate web application. Um, there's also a tool that can also be used to use for um, test automation. We also have Telerik Studio for automation. We also have Test Complete. We also have um, lamp test we also have browser for testing we also have cross browser testing so there are about more than 20 to 50 testing tools that can be used for automation automation testing beside the one that you have mentioned on our presentation actually you have to decide as per your requirement what is your actual requirement so it's a part of a uh, test plan or test implementation that which tool are you going to use like for the performance testing here load runner is mentioned but apart from that there is a neo load j meter okay some are freeware some are uh, we have to purchase license copy uh, there is a tool for the application testing securely it is the image base so someone who wants to test it you ui only then he can use the security tool. So it's completely depend upon your requirements. What are you going to automate? And the most important thing, we before we start testing or we start automation, we we sit down, we look at uh, which tool can we use, and we look at what are we going to test. If we are going to test mobile, it means we have to sit down and look at the testing tool that is suitable for mobile. If we are going to test a web application, we need to sit down and look at which which um, tool that we can use to say to test our mobile. We check the best tool out of the. There's a lot of tools out there, but we can at the end of the day check one tool that can you that we can use for automation. So it's up to a team to choose which tool they want to use for automation, and also checking the requirements. It helps after checking the requirements. That one can the checking requirements can guide you to which tool that you're going to use. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so I think uh, the box is uh, chat box is full of the questions but we are running behind the time i know that uh, you have already spent a lot of time uh, so uh, jake and jake sir and kushal sir thank you for bringing the insights of uh, software testing and the it job market after the covid effect uh, we are really 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 thankful to you for bringing up this information to our students sharing your knowledge uh, you are uh, sitting at some thousands of kilometers and uh, still we are communicating yeah that's great uh, so i think uh, uh, dear friends students uh, that's a wrap up of our uh, afternoon and that's a wrap up of morning for uh, jake and uh, <laughs> sir so it's a great privilege to propose a vote of thanks uh, I would like to express my sincere thanks to today's speaker, uh, Mr. Kushal Bambre sir and uh, Jake Spila sir uh, for their valuable time in spite of their professional commitment, business commitment and the personal commitment. I would like to Thank also you. extend my gratitude to the management. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for giving us the time and uh, interacting with our students. This, this, this will really help us uh, student, those who want to make their career in uh, software testing and uh, also this is this this session is uh, helpful for all the students who are uh, really worried about their future what will happen after covid 19 uh, what what would be their future prospect and all so i think that uh, you have uh, answered all of their queries though uh, this is you know uh, this is what the today's uh, 
important question in every aspiring minds those who those who are in engineering so thanks a lot sir for being with us and uh, taking the time for us so i would like to extend my gratitude to the management principal vice principal head of the department dr vr sonone for their constant support and encouragement a big thanks to all the uh, students who have registered for uh, making the time in your busy schedule to join us here this afternoon so in this unprecedented pandemic situation i wish you all a pleasant day stay healthy stay safe and take care thanks again today's speaker and all the participant i would like to remind that attendees will receive the certificate after the end of this webinar so with the permission of jake sir kushal sir and the organizer dheeraj sir uh, i would like to end this meeting sir shall we Yes, sir. Yes, thanks, definitely. Thanks from our side, yeah, uh, Nitin sir. Thanks from our side as well for, for inviting us and it, uh, discussing with students. It's always a great experience. So thanks uh, to your institute, college, and special thanks to Nitin sir and Dheeraj sir for inviting us and scheduling this one. And also I. Uh, appeal to guys so uh, don't lose hopes your market will be good just prepare and uh, if you want anything on the software testing side on the education and job in abroad side you can reach to me or jex or you can reach to nitin sir or dheeraj sir and keep in touch so we can if possible we'll advise you or suggest you oh that's great session thank you very much to institute and all teachers and students thank you kushal sir thank you for giving the opportunity to our students <laughs> thanks a lot sir dheeraj sir if you want to uh, mention anything please sir no sir no sir thank you kushal sir and jake sir for oh. your valuable guidance thank you so much you're welcome thank you sir thank you thank you yes bye okay so i, I wish uh, stay safe uh, take care stay at home and uh, wish you a pleasant uh, time ahead thank you thank you okay thanks